we're gonna talk about chain link fence. We're gonna show you all the parts and pieces of this chain link fence so that that way when you go to the store, you know exactly what you're looking for and exactly what you need. Let's do it. Let's talk about what this post is. This is a terminal post. This is a bigger post, which is intended for you to terminate your fabric and your top rail and your tension wire. So this is a two and three eighths terminal post. So terminal posts go at the end of a run of chain link. If you were gonna start right at your house, that's the end because that's a starting point. And then you're gonna go straight and you're gonna have a corner because everybody has a corner. That is another terminal post. That's where you're gonna use this guy. You're gonna use this guy at a gate. In between all those terminal posts, you're gonna use this guy. It's a line post. These go in between your terminal posts and you're able to fasten your fabric to it. And it has these fancy little, what we call eye tops on. And it, the top rail runs through the eye top. The top rail rests on top of the line post. But it's a support post so that, that way your chain link fence doesn't fall down. Also, What's the industry standard for distance from post to post or post to post? 10 feet is the industry standard. The industry standard for as far as you can go without starting a new run, industry standard is 500 feet. So if you're gonna do a straight line of fence from terminal to terminal and you are gonna do a stretch that is, no, is straight of 800 feet, every 500 feet you would do a, another stretch post. Now, if you're gonna do a run of 800 feet, put that stretch post at the halfway point, which would be 400 feet. The very top of the post, you gotta have a cap. That is, on this, is a two and three eighths post. This is a two and three eighths aluminum dome cap. It just sits on top, keeps all the rainwater out. Okay, so the next part is, you have an inch and three eighths aluminum rail end. This is what the inch and three eighths top rail terminates into. We're gonna use this, but we're gonna have to have another part, which is the brace band. That's what the brace band looks like. This is a two and three eighths brace band. And it's gonna clamp these two together. But you gotta have one more part. You gotta have a nut and bolt to go through all that. So when it's all said and done, we have a two and three eighths brace band, five sixteenths by inch and a quarter nut and bolt going into and through a inch and three eighths aluminum rail end. This sits on top of that post just like that and terminates that's how the top rail terminates into the terminal post. If you have a corner, this one right here is going up. And if we stack the next one for the next corner, we're gonna take this one and we're gonna flip it. Now everything is on the same plane. Cool. Next going down, what we have is we have the tension band. This is what the tension band looks like. Its job is to hold the fabric. So it goes on the post just like this. It's how the chain link connects to the terminal post. But again, you're gonna have to have that nut and bolt. You always need nut and bolt. So the nut and bolt goes through the tension band and then your tension bar goes through the chain link and back behind the nut and bolt. I just wanna do a comparison here of the differences between a tension band and a brace band. The brace band, which is right here, is coming off the center of the post and the tension band is coming off of the edge of the post. The brace band is a lot harder to compress than the tension band. I can move this freely. I cannot move that very freely. The brace band's right there. And oh, 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 it's spoiler alert. There's two. There's another one right here. Right there. Okay, okay, Dan. Okay, I got it. <laughs> right here, we are using another brace band and it is for the tension wire. The only other thing that we have that I didn't show you is the tension bar. So this is the tension bar right here. What it does is it goes in between, it goes through one straw. That's how you're able to terminate it. Yes, you need that. You need that at every terminal post. Going over this way, we have an inch and seven eighths line post. We have some ties. So you need the ties and the ties are for tying the fabric to the post and also you're gonna have to have ties to tie the fabric to the top rail. These are what our ties look like. Now, maybe you guys have seen some other ties and they're straight, they're called, we call them stick ties. Yeah, we don't use those. We got with the 20th century and these things are far better than a stick tie. There's a lot of people out there that don't even know about them. You're gonna need a tie tool with a tie. This is an 11 gauge tie and 11 gauge tie tool. and it twists it up and then breaks off the tails. The nice thing about this is it sucks it so tight that it can't move. 
and I don't need a set of pliers to sit there and wrap a tie around a piece of chain link and do it continuously. Far faster, far more secure, just all around a far better product. So that is also how we tie the top rail, just a different size of a tie. They come in various sizes and two different gauges. Now, since we have a top rail, we need to have something on the bottom. We put a two-stranded twisted, two twisted 12 and a half gauge tension wire at the bottom. And what we have there, we have to use something to attach the tension wire to the chain link fabric. We have our hog ring pliers. You put a hog ring in it just like that. Put it over the chain link, wrap it around the back side, capture the tension wire, and compress it. And then that is going to hog ring the tension wire to the chain link. All right, so to get the tension wire tightened, what we used was we used our own made in house T handle. To stretch the chain link, we used a two and three eighths bear hold. They come in various sizes. Obviously to put the hog rings on, we used the hog ring pliers. To tie the ties, we used an 11 gauge tie tool. To cover all of our welding, we used ProGal. Best galvanizing spray that you could ever use and it lasts a really long time. So if you're wondering, now that I know all that stuff, how do I put it all together? Well, just so happens we have a video for that. Make sure and check it out right here and we'll show you how to build a residential four foot tall chain link fence. And if you're wondering, how does it roll out for the commercial side? Make sure and check out how to do a commercial grade chain link fence and that video is right here. The end with SWI, we are Wyoming's fence and gate company and we hope you have a good dang day.